Well, right off the bat, guys, I immediately have to give this movie credit for something. Something I never thought any movie could actually do. I actually liked Jai Courtney. <laughs> I thought he was cool. Thank you, movie. Thank you. <laughs> anyway, hey there, guys. What's up? What's going on? It is Autobot Mike 18 here, back with another movie review. Guys, I'm going to be reviewing. This is probably the last biggest summer movie we are going to get, so I better save her onto this because. Bye bye summer. But um, <laughs> guys, in this video, I am going to be reviewing Suicide Squad. That's right, guys. The latest entry in the DC Extended Universe, Suicide Squad, is now has now hit theaters. And I saw the movie this weekend. I saw it earlier today. I guys, this movie. I'm just gonna preface you right off the bat. Okay, I see movies opening weekend roughly. Um, but I can tell you right off the bat, this movie is going to make a shit ton of money, okay? I went to a packed theater, sold out, Saturday afternoon, early Saturday afternoon, me and my girlfriend went, and we saw Suicide Squad, and the theater was crazy packed, okay? Um, but, uh, yeah, Suicide Squad, it's, uh, a lot of controversy brewing around this movie, as there has been essentially for this entire year. First we had Batman v Superman and this film is set right after, essentially right after, uh, maybe a few months after the events of Batman v Superman. So this is yet again another continuation of DC setting up their universe for Justice League and for other movies. So obviously the hype for this movie was pretty strong. I'll, I'll say where I stood with the hype and I want to talk about a few other things concerning angry fans, let's just say that much. But first, what I want to do guys is get into the premise behind Suicide Squad. Essentially guys, this movie is doing what no other comic book film has done before in the past. Taking supervillains and teaming them up and releasing them to fight other evil. Suicide Squad. There you have it. That, that's the really like bare bones, like, okay, that's essentially what this movie's about premise. If you want me to go more in depth, here we go. Okay, so essentially, guys, the government is after the events of Batman v Superman and the fact that Superman's a metahuman and there could be other metahumans like him out there. They're pretty scared, let's just put it at that. So a head government official played by Viola Davis wants to put together a team of imprisoned supervillain freaks, essentially, including characters Harley Quinn. Deadshot, Killer Croc, just to name a few, and essentially they want them to carry out Black Ops missions, you know, maybe essentially protect the universe in, in case anything big happens again, and of course, something big is happening again, and it's up to these, um, this ragtag group of people um, to save the world, but they're evil, so that's the spin on this movie. <laughs> so guys, yes, that is the premise of Suicide Squad, and that's actually a pretty exciting premise. Yes, when you look at all of the other comic book movies we have had, we've never seen a film do this before, take this sort of story forward, you know what I mean? So I definitely was intrigued to see where they were going to go with Suicide Squad. Now what I want to briefly, just, just for a second, I want to talk with you guys about uh, recent news. Um, uh, DC fans, well, they're not happy, and neither are critics with this movie, and the DC fans are pissed at movie review critics because uh, this movie has not been getting good reviews at all. Suicide Squad, last I checked, currently stands at a 26% rating on Rotten Tomatoes, which is really, really rotten. Okay, so my, you know, I was looking forward to the movie, but my, I, I got really, really skeptical about a few days before seeing the movie because I was like, oh no, don't tell me this is Batman v Superman bad, you know what I mean? Because uh, I'm not the biggest fan of Batman v Superman. You guys know that. I've made many videos talking about it. I don't want to talk about it anymore. <laughs> but DC fans have gone so far to make a petition to shut down Rotten Tomatoes, which I thought was ridiculous in its own right because they hadn't seen the movie. But are they right? Do they have good intention? Is Suicide Squad actually a good movie? Is it not bad? Are, are, are critics just bashing on, bashing on DC because they want to? Well, I don't know why they're bashing on DC. I guess they just don't care for the movies. Me, personally, I enjoyed Suicide Squad. I had fun with it. I don't think it's a perfect movie by any means. I think there are a great deal of problems, most of which stemming from the screenplay. But do I honestly feel that this movie is... 26% rotten bad on Rotten Tomatoes? 
No, not really. I mean, if this movie scored somewhere, if it's landed somewhere around a 50-something, I could maybe see that. But low 20s? No, nah, not buying that. I just, I, I don't know. I definitely, there are great aspects that you can take away from Suicide Squad, in my opinion. Um, I think there were a lot of great things going forward, it, uh, forward with Suicide Squad concerning the cast. And I definitely wanted this film to, I, I guess, bring DC in the right place because Batman v Superman really didn't do that for me. So I was hoping that this would give DC that little push and would make fans say, okay, listen, we can make great movies. We do know what we're doing. Let, listen, look, here, we're setting up our universe. Enjoy it or stand against it, essentially. And I think this is going to be one of those movies that people are going to be like, okay, Batman v Superman sucked. Suicide Squad sucked. I'm not going to like it. Well, I am, I'm kind of in the middle. I enjoyed Suicide Squad, but I did not like Batman v Superman. So I'm still intrigued intrigued where DC is going to go with their universe. But that said, I'm here to talk about Suicide Squad as a movie. And as a film, there's a lot of good to take away from this film. Namely, the performances. Namely, I think the talent involved in the actual like filmmaking process. I think David Ayer, who directed this film, is a very good director. Personally, I love End of Watch from him. That is my favorite David Ayer film. And I thought Fury was a really good uh, World War II drama as well. Um, that really had a great third act and I really uh, appreciated that movie. So because of that I had faith in David Ayer directing Suicide Squad but I think the thing that doesn't that doesn't quite hold up was the screenplay and ultimately that's a problem I've had not only with this movie and Batman v Superman but that's a problem I've had with a lot of movies this year was the screenplay and how certain characters weren't fully fleshed out like they needed to be. I'll get into that later. What I want to talk about now is the good of Suicide Squad. What really makes this movie different and unique and made me enjoy it and laugh out loud in some great moments I think is the cast for sure because I think this movie does a great job of giving us really interesting characters and the, whoever cast this thing did a great job in picking the right actors to fit these roles. Roles. Because in my opinion, the cast is great. Let's start off with the biggest, quite possibly the biggest and most well-known of the bunch, Margot Robbie as Harley Quinn. I think she was a great scene stealer in this movie for sure. Margot Robbie killed it as Harley Quinn. She's psychopathic. She's flirtatious. I, I think she... she all of her characteristics fit what I would expect from a character like Harley Quinn. She does really crazy messed up shit in this movie and she has a really a lot of great lines in this movie too that I actually laughed out loud at. I thought her character was clearly the most well defined and had the best characteristics out of everyone in the whole group. Um, I would definitely love to see more of Harley Quinn in other movies. I thought she was great. Margot Robbie, she's great. She's a good actress. She's one of the rising stars of today, of course. Um, for me, though, guys, I think my favorite character of the group, Harley Quinn had the best scenes, but in my opinion, the best and most well-rounded character of the group was for sure Deadshot, played by Will Smith. First off, let's just round of applause for Will Smith for finally being back in a movie that doesn't suck. The last big movie I saw him in a big role was After Earth, and oh my goodness, that was not Will Smith. This ladies and gentlemen, is Will Smith. Will Smith brings that charm back. His character is very well-rounded. I loved his backstory, essentially. Um, I, his character has the best action moments in the entire movie. He's a badass. He's hardcore, but he also is very charming at the same time because it's Will frickin' Smith, and he is, in my opinion, my favorite character. I would love a Deadshot solo film, honestly. I really would have. I would have loved a Deadshot solo film before this movie came out. I would have loved him even more in this movie. So, excellent job, Will Smith. Good job, sir. Also, as I said in my intro, Jai Courtney playing Captain Boomerang. I'll get into some of the minor characters of the team later uh, and my problems with them, but Jai Courtney actually did not annoy me for once in a movie. Holy crap, is it the apocalypse? It must be because Jai Courtney didn't piss me off. He actually was cool. He had a cool accent. He had a few good moments. I, he didn't annoy me. Moving on. Let's not talk about it anymore. But good job, uh, Jai Courtney, I guess. Um, I also was really fascinated by Jay Hernandez's character who plays El Diablo. I thought he was pretty cool as well. For a while, I was like, where are they going with his character? And finally, about into the second act, we fi I finally got a better idea of who his character is and what defines him as a person. So I, I was really into that character as well for a good majority 
uh, of the film. I feel a few minor characters uh, that I, I, you know, I'll get into a little bit later, like Killer Croc and Katana, I, I, I need to talk about more. I also thought uh, Joel Kinnaman did a very good job as, as uh, Captain Flag. Uh, Viola Davis was great in the film. And the last, saving the last for release, this is, this is the one that some people were worried about, but at the same time, a lot of people were like, okay, he looks great. He's going to do a great job. Jared Leto as the Joker. I honestly, when I heard that casting announcement, I was like, I could probably see that. Jared Leto's got some range. I could see him taking on the Joker. And then when I saw the, the photos and everything, I wasn't like a diehard fan of all the tattoos and everything and like the, you know, how he looked. I, I, I thought, you know, the hair and everything. I was like, okay, he looks interesting. Different take on the Joker. I'm excited to see it. But then I started seeing the trailers and I was like, this guy's going to kill it as the Joker. And he does. Jared Leto was amazing as the Joker. Uh, I, I, do I have to sit here and say whether or not he's better than Heath Ledger? Well, he, he was in one movie, and he didn't have that many scenes, which I'll get into very, very shortly. So I can't sit here and say that he was better than Heath Ledger. No, of course not. But as a Joker, he was incredible. His eyes, he got the mannerisms down, he got the laugh down. I was so intrigued. I wanted so much more of him. I'll get into that when I get into my flaws. So guys, the cast by far is the best thing going for this movie. They all, they're all unique. They all brought something interesting to the characters. And I was into these characters as much, not mainly because of the writing, but because of how great these actors are and how much they brought these characters to life on the screen. And that's why I was into Suicide Squad as much as I was. Also, as I said earlier, I think David Ayer did a great job directing the film. I think the shots look really good. The action sequences are well done. The editing's not so choppy. I don't understand what the hell's going on. Uh, in the action sequences, the choreography and everything is really, really good. The CG, any CG work that was done looks really, really nice for the most part. Of the team, our antagonist on the other hand, meh, not so great. Stood out a little bit, but you know what? Oh well. <laughs> um, yeah, the pacing was, was pretty good for the most part. I felt like the first act was just trying to cram so many people down our throats, but then I sort of got into it, and I really got into the movie at the end of the first act and into the second act. I was really hooked into it, and I was really intrigued to see where everything would go. And then the third act, I had, I had some fun with as well. And I also think one of the best components of this movie by far is the soundtrack. They had great track listing for this movie and the score is also pretty good. Also, just throwing this out there, the ending in this movie is excellent. I loved it. I loved what they did with the characters. I love how where each character is at the end of this film essentially. And yeah, it was great. And I, I could definitely see a sequel being made. And I would definitely go pay and see a, a, a Suicide Squad 2. I would. Because I was intrigued and I was into these characters because of how great these actors were. Getting into my cons, I know it sounds like I've been praising Suicide Squad, but I definitely have to hit the film a little bit where I feel it faltered, and I honestly think that is in the writing. And as I said earlier, I think that's been a fault not only of Batman v Superman, but of a lot of other movies this year in general. I just don't think the writing and the characters we've gotten have been up to par like what with what they should have been. I think for me, my biggest problem with the film is that we get introduced to this team of supervillains and I would say about Harley Quinn and Deadshot and maybe El Diablo matter the most. Everybody else felt very one-dimensional and felt like I didn't get to know them as people. Like, I just saw them as characters on a screen wearing costumes and everything. And that was really it. I think they didn't do anything with Killer Croc's character. Same with Jai Courtney as Captain Boomerang. I thought he was great, but I don't... I, I didn't get into the character because they didn't focus on them. And I know they're focusing on the others, but I honestly felt to have made this movie work as a whole for these characters to work great together as a unit and for me to feel these characters as a whole, I wanted to feel every one of them. I wanted all of them to be well-rounded and all of them to be, uh, you know, fleshed out almost entirely. And they kind of weren't. Katana just pops in and out and that was really it. They didn't do much with her character. I didn't know anything really about her backstory apart from one scene. And that was really it. Um, and there's one character, I don't want to spoil anything, I don't know if this character is big in the comics, but he's a member of the team, and he's on screen for five minutes, and then he's not anymore. I'm not going to say what happens, but if he's a big character in the comics, I think a lot of fanboys are going to be pissed. I don't know, though, so who knows. Um, I, I kind of feel the villain, or the antagonizing force that's driving these characters to essentially, you know, it's driving the story, essentially, for these, these villains. Um, I'll just call her the witch, essentially. I don't want to give anything away. 
I don't think she did much. I, I just, we, we didn't have enough scenes with her, in my opinion. I, she's kind of just standing there, maybe creating armies, and that's really all we got with development into her character. That was pretty much it. And I felt that was kind of a cop-out. I, I wasn't as intrigued into the battle or into the final sequence of the film because I felt that that antagonist wasn't holding up to what she should have essentially been. And finally, my last biggest complaint is how incredibly underused Jared Leto was in this film. Holy crap, guys, he probably has about 15 to 20 minutes of screen time, and that's it. I was really, really let down with that. That was that was the biggest disappointment in this entire film, because every scene I got with Jared Leto as the Joker was amazing, and some of the best moments of the film. He had great moments, but I was waiting for that Dark Knight moment with Heath Ledger in the bank, where he does something so shocking and mind-blowing that the whole audience just gets blown out of the water, and I didn't get that at all from his character. I had heard that they cut a lot of his scenes out, and I'm guessing that was to focus mostly on the main group of the Suicide Squad. But that, I, I, I honestly felt that they either should have had more scenes with him in the film, or they should have just cut him out entirely of the film. Because he honestly didn't have a big plot, he didn't play a big part really. He was only close to Harley Quinn, and that was really it. So I thought that was a just a, a big disappointment. There's also a few cameos that are again setting up the Justice League. I do love the mid credit scene, by the way, it was great. But there's a few cameos that I thought, one in particular, I was like, okay, just stop. Just stop it. It's not working. Stop throwing in cameos. It's, it doesn't work. But Jared Leto Joker, I, I really wish that he had a movie before this. Because I honestly feel he, he just, there's more to be done with that character. I, I'm going to keep saying this. I feel we needed a Batman solo movie before Batman v Superman and before Justice League. And in that Batman uh, solo film, we could have been established to Jared Leto's Joker and Harley Quinn and maybe Deadshot. And I think that would have brought us into Suicide Squad better and made me care more about the Joker as a character. But that said, guys, there's fun moments in this movie. There's fun action moments. The cast is great. They're happy to be there. There are some great comedic moments as well. The tone isn't as dark and serious as you've come to expect from most DC entries. That said, guys, I think there are a few problems, but I still would recommend seeing this movie because I think it is a bunch of fun. Go see it with your friends. Go see it with, uh, you know, your spouse or whatever uh, if they're into this type of thing. If you're a comic book, comic book fan, definitely go see it. I don't think it's bad, as bad as people are saying it is. I do not think it is that bad. I don't know why some people are, you know, saying it's awful, one of the worst of the year. I totally don't agree with that at all. Guys, in the end, I am going to go solid grade of of, uh, I'm going to go 8 out of 10 or a B- minus for Suicide Squad. I definitely recommend you guys check it out at some point. So guys, my I leave it to you now. What did you guys think of Suicide Squad? Let me know down below in the comments. And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. I will see you in my next video. Bye, guys.